Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to The Huddle, the Review.com's weekly sports show. I'm Rob Toter, joined as always by Jeff Supanik. And today, Jeff, we're going to talk about the Mount Union Purple Raiders, who advanced to the NCAA Division III football semifinals with an impressive 70-37 to victory over the Frostburg State Bobcats last Saturday. You were there. Uh, just kind of recap how that day went. Uh, all Mount Union. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just probably that first half was as good of a first half as they played Looking back, going playoff games since the second half of the 15 Stag Bowl, I mean, they were just locked in, focused, and, you know, there was some pregame antics by Frostburg State that I think really added fuel to the fire. For those that don't know, they, instead of standing on the sideline like mandated NCAA rules, they chose to stand in Mount Union's end zone close to the Purple Raiders, and it um, wasn't the best of gestures, so, you know, it, I think it really got them fired up, and then they just came out defensively, sacks on three straight third downs, and then the offense was off to the races. Obviously the big story on the offense, Luke Poorman making his first start of the year at quarterback for the Purple Raiders, and, and really didn't they didn't miss a beat. No, they didn't. I mean, you know, give Coach Karras credit to, for making the decision. He said Coach's decision went with it, and, you know, listen to the players after the game. They talk about how well Luke, he, you know, he goes into every week preparing like he's going to be the starter, and that's a credit to him, and I think when you have that type of attitude, that pays off in a thing like, you know, you're called into a quarterfinal playoff game, and you look like you've been playing for the first 12 weeks, so hats off to him. They didn't, I mean, they look just as aggressive as they've been all year, so they didn't change the game plan, and it was phenomenal. Well, this week, the, the Purple Raiders travel uh, to the national semifinals. They will take on Wisconsin Oshkosh, who lost in last year's Stag Bowl. And, and Jeff, kind of recap the, the what you believe is the thinking behind the NCAA to send Mount Union on the road. If I had to get, I mean, I know a lot of people look, well, Mount Union's ranked number two, they're number three, but the poll ranking, whether it's the AFCA or the media poll, don't carry weight with that. It from They don't release the national seed, which I – which they would do, but they don't. So I think you just look at the bracket, and I think the strength of schedule with for Wisconsin Oshkosh, obviously, you know, number one, they only played nine games this year, so their div- divisor was lower at the end, and then they also only played six conference games versus nine like the OAC does. So they were higher with that, and then they did have the regional ranked win over Wisconsin Whitewater, where, you know, teams like John Carroll and Heidelberg had some losses. They shouldn't have dropped Mountain Union out of – having that. So I think that was ultimately and one thing they do, they look back at their and they had a common opponent. They both played John Carroll this year, that they look back at previous success and they go back last year where Oshkosh went to the final versus Mount Union to the semi. So that probably would explain why. I mean, I don't know if anybody will really know why, but that would be my guess. Okay. And so a quick scouting report on Oshkosh. They're big, like all those with um very big, very talented. I don't think they're too much different from when Mount Union played them in 2010 and 11 in the regular season. A big physical team. Experience, they have a lot. I think they brought 10 guys back on offense from last year's runner-up team. little green on defense where, so, you know, matchup, you think maybe with Mount Union's experience, try to go after them. You know, and then you have the weather. It's always a factor up in northern Wisconsin. But I think it should be a very good matchup. It's, I think both semifinals truly are almost pick them that, you know, you can make a case for each of the four teams why they would have a chance to win. Okay. Well, make sure you check out the Alliance Review and the Review.com all week. Jeff will have previews on, on the game. And, of course, he'll be there Saturday to cover the game. Make sure you check out his uh, Twitter feed, uh, Jeff's Up uh, Review. And also uh, live coverage uh, throughout the day on thereview.com and, of course, in next Monday's Alliance Review as well. We would be remiss if we did not talk about uh, Coach Larry Karras being inducted this week into the College Football Hall of Fame and just a tremendous honor for him. And and you've uh, covered Coach Karras for a number of years, as I did way back in the day. I covered his first season back in 1986 when they Mm -hmm. went 11-1. Just talk about uh, Coach Karras uh, as a a leader of, of that football program. I think you just hit it perfect. A leader. I mean, I think he coached that always held his players accountable for their actions, good or bad. He realized mistakes are going to happen, but if you take accountability for him, and I think he really put a lot into that. And just listening to some of his 
quotes from the press conference earlier today he had in New York City. He talked about Coach Wabel taught him about planning and preparation thoroughly, that how much that went a long way. And I think that's been the one staple of the Mountain Union program under Larry Karras that Ken Wabel started and Vince Karras has continued. Mm -hmm. That how, how many times do we watch them? Did they look so prepared when they're out there or – you know, the adage of we knew what the other team was going to do as soon as they lined up, and I think that's a credit, just the little things like that. And then, you know, just his ability to adapt to the times and you know, very innovative and just yeah. a tremendous person. I mean, if they're, you know, he is essentially, he is Mountain Union. I mean, when yeah. you think of his love for that school as a whole, too. Yep. Yeah. And just a personal note I'm, uh, for me, you know, I know Coach Wable doesn't have the glowing record, but uh, really he's a Hall of Fame coach in my opinion as well. Uh, so make sure you check out the Alliance Review and the Review.com. We'll have coverage of Coach Karras' in, induction into the College Football Hall of Fame uh, throughout the week as well. So, uh, And one other note, don't forget uh, that football game Saturday is going to be on ESPN3. So if you have access to ESPN3, make sure you check out the Purple Raiders live at 1 o'clock Eastern time on Saturday. So for Jeff, this is Rob. Hopefully we'll be talking to you next week to talk about a stag ball game.